And today, I think I'm flying solo. We'll see if anyone joins me here on the stream. But basically, I want to tell you how much I have learned from all of you and learn as a result of doing this live streaming every weekday for now 10 days. What I found is that there's a lot of unity. A lot of us are going through the same thing. Um, there is a huge outpouring of sharing in terms of resources. There are small business loans that forgive payroll for those of you who are running organizations. There are new grants and opportunities from artists. I just read the la latest in uh, an email from Michael Springs office earlier this morning for here on um, Miami-Dade County. Hello everybody on Instagram. Um, and I just wanted to thank you for being supportive, for joining the lively conversations, whether here on Facebook, on Instagram, um, or in some of the, the dialogue that I'm having with people out and about, out and about <laughs> on Zoom and other platforms. So you're really why I'm here. You are what is making this possible. And what's on your mind is what I'm here to help with and to connect with. So thank you for the, for the amazing opportunity to, to be here and talk with you. I know we have several people watching us on YouTube. So thanks to everybody for tuning in. So my name is Marta Siebenhar, and I run a consulting firm called Cultured Innovations. And I'm all about practical creativity, which is demystifying the whole sense of what it means to be a creative person and how you can apply that in your own life. So I believe that everyone is creative and it's just a question of what that actually looks like for you. So actually, let's talk about that for a minute. Let's take a pause from COVID-19 and let's talk about what is creativity. So I've read a couple of books because that's one of the reasons that I do what I do. I'm like a learner and I'm very fortunate in the line of work that I'm in. I, I learn as a professional. Professional learning is what I do. And basically what that means is taking information from lots of sources and putting it together with my own experience in new ways. And the way that that looks for me is just my own innate creativity. But I was reading a book uh, by Kaina Lesky, who is a professor at RISD, the R Rhode Island School of Design. She's an architecture professor there. And she wrote a book called Creati The Storm of Creativity. And I love this book. It's, it's very thin, it's very scholarly. It is beautiful, it has illustrations, and is just so thoughtful about the process of creativity. And what it's really helped me understand is that creativity doesn't necessarily look like creativity to you, the person experiencing it. Because creativity is something that is so natural and so innate. Sometimes when we're experiencing it or sharing it, we don't even recognize that's what it is because it just feels like it's part of us. So here's what I understand about the practice of creativity, and this comes from that source as well as many others. Um, creativity happens when you are in a situation and there's enough about it that, oh, live video ended, hold on. Let's try again. Let's go live again. Okay, sorry, sorry everybody. <laughs> Um, so creativity really is something very personal and creativity comes from two things, your own personal experience, your lived experience. So a lot of what we've talked about this past week is in doing small experiments because small experiments give you life experience, doing a thing you haven't done before in a way that is not too scary and overwhelming and will give you data that helps inform everything that comes next. So creativity actually comes from lived experience. So the more lived experience, the better in my book. And then the second thing is priming. So what do I mean by priming? Priming really means that you are, you, you've had a conversation, you've read an article, you've seen a video. There's something that is kind of percolating in the background of what your life experience is. And a lot of times this will be like business books, this may be even a conversation with your children or something you see out in nature, but it's really kind of like the convergence of things kind of like that are in your consciousness, but maybe you haven't really thought about specifically, but they stay with you paired with this sense like, oh, I kind of recognize this situation, but I've not seen it this way exactly yet. But 
based on these things from the priming, like, oh, I see a solution. So creativity to me is when that aha moment happens, when that kind of magic just falls into place where everything that you've lived kind of matches the opportunity and you are the person that sees the connection. You are the person who knows what to do and you are the person who has the impulse to act on that. So to me, that's what creativity is. I'd love to hear uh, what you all think about that, uh, what your own experiences are with creativity because it's so fascinating because it's as varied as the human beings on the planet. And I really, really believe that most people do not self-identify as creative because they believe creativity is only expressed through artistry. It is only expressed by people who have studied a thing and mastered it. And it's great to master something, but there are very few masters. Even Yo-Yo Ma talks about the work of being a musician and he's working at it all the time. So even when there's a great master, according to everybody else, um, as we know, as artists, as creative people, um, we know how far we have to go. We're never really masters. It's just that we find something, we stick to it, we start to have deep knowledge. And then once you start to have deep knowledge in something, you keep going into that, keep going into that, keep going into that. So it never really ends and you never become a master, even though you feel like you should be at a certain point, 10,000 hours and everything, that's baseline. But as we know, artists and creative people are also very obsessive. But I wanna help democratize this idea of creativity because I really believe it belongs to everyone. And the more that we start to recognize it in each other, the more beautiful we're going to be in our solutions and the way that we are showing up in our lives and the way that we are actually doing our work. So I think there's no downside to creativity. And for me, being creative and being fully in your creativity is a very generous thing. So when you're also recognizing the generosity of other people, especially in the creativity that they share, I believe that we're just in a, in a different place and we're able to get through things like what we're going through right now. The more that we can be together, the more that, sorry, my, my live stream stopped again. The more that we can be together celebrating each other's creativity, celebrating each other's contributions is how we're actually gonna all move forward. Especially when there's something that is bigger than all of us, that is more challenging than all of us. Um, this is the time. And as I was talking with Michelle uh, a couple of days ago, Michelle Caravia, we are really privileged to be creative. And if all of us are creative, we all have special gifts and talents to contribute. And it, that's why we're here. We're here to discover those. We're here to share those. And we're here to share those generously and abundantly because we help each other that way. And there's not a thing, if you really think about it. So I work with a lot of artists and a lot of creative people, but I also work with business owners and they're creative people too, by the way, because we're all creative. But it's a variety of people. I like variety. I'm naturally drawn to, to variety because I'm, I'm a learner. I now get paid to learn for a living, which is such a privilege and such an honor. And it feeds me so much. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, so creativity is what we need to get through difficult times. Let's pause a minute on creativity and talk about what the opportunity is that we have right now through our own experience, through our own brilliant minds, and through coming together. Oh yes, okay, so networking is something that a lot of people don't enjoy. And the reason is they feel like they are asking for something and there's something kind of not nice about that, that there's something shameful and something self-serving about that. So I wanna challenge that because if you really look at your life and you look at your career, I bet you will look and see that almost every opportunity, almost every insight, and almost every dollar has not come through a random event. It has come through people. So when I talk about being generous and giving back and being, being generous with one another, what I really mean by that is that we rely on each other in many ways that we don't even necessarily notice. But when we do networking, 
the idea in the way that I like to think about it is you're not looking to get something from someone. It's not a transaction. What you're actually wanting to do is to find out what it is you can contribute to that person. So kind of like a generosity seeking missile that you can be for other people. People like when you help them just like you like to be helped. And I did a radical receiving challenge in November where I invited people to come online and do 30 days of just challenging themselves to receive, to accept and to allow. And this was very basic stuff, but we saw people really changing and opening up new pathways to receive. And that was financial, that was um, acts of service, and that, was, that showed up in other forms like surprise checks in the mail, surprise opportunities, surprise trips, um, and generosity. So I think when we practice generosity, it shows up in our lives. So now more than ever, we have an opportunity to use our creativity, our skills, our talents, and our purpose to specifically help people. And a lot of the advice I've been giving this week in particular is that we are physically distanced. Yesterday we talked with Mark about being socially distanced versus physically distanced. And if we're physically distanced, really what we're doing is we're, we have an opportunity to give back and to network in a different way. And when you come at it with this idea of networking by being generous and by serving, that helps you build a relationship. The point of networking is not to get something. The point of networking is to create relationships so that eventually you know somebody well enough to number one, trust them. And number two, there are cool things that happen when you start to give and share and receive. So just like you wanna to contribute to somebody, you wanna to contribute to the people in your life, you wanna to contribute to your followers and to your audiences and whoever else it might be, your family, you also want to receive, because you can't just breathe out, you need to also breathe in, otherwise you kind of mess up the whole thing. So if you're just giving and being generous and not receiving, you kind of break the order of things. So that, that it's kind of like if you have a talent and a gift and you're compelled to share, but you're scared, you're kind of messing up the, the energy of the universe, the, the balance that is innate in, um, in, the, in the kind of potential that we have out there. So networking with generosity because you're stewarding a relationship. One of the things, again, like when you are turning on the water, that is a person behind the water. That's a whole team of people. When you are looking at your phone, there's a whole million millions of people infrastructure behind these technologies. So the table that I'm sitting at, the chair, like all of these were created by human beings and even in technology and even with our earth, we're like partners with each other. And there's no reminder like what we're going through right now to help us remember we're really in this together. Like Mark was saying yesterday, we're in the same boat. So I think that's a tremendous opportunity one question I have for you, and it's hard for me to do any of this work without issuing a challenge, but now is the time to double down on relationship building. And I know we are physically distanced, some people are socially distanced, and this is a time to heal and to rest and to restore, but it's also a time to accept, allow, and receive. And just as you are doing that, and serving that purpose in somebody else's life, it's also a time to contribute and share and be part of something bigger, which is this whole network of relationships all around the world. We're more globalized than we've ever been, and that's a tremendous opportunity. So I'm gonna challenge you, look in your phone, find five people you have not talked to in at least a month, even better if it's been uh, six months or a year, and send them some sort of message to let them know you're thinking about them. This is the time to reach out to that person who you kind of met and you had a thing with them, there was an energy, you felt good, you felt like you had great ideas to talk about together, you just felt something cool, and then you put that business card aside or you forgot about it. Now's the time to reach out to people, not only because it's generous and we are physically distanced, 
but there are people who really need to hear from people right now. So you're actually being generous when you reach out and let them know that they are on your mind. Second of all, if it gives you an opportunity to get deeper and closer to somebody, even at a distance, that matters in the generosity that you're creating in, in, in its abundance right now. And there's nothing that we need more right now than generosity and an abundance of generosity. And you are generous just by letting people know that you're, that you're there, that you are caring about them, and that they have some sort of value in your life. I work with a lot of people, I'm, I do a lot of coaching, and the number one struggle, the number one pain point for most creative people, for most entrepreneurs, is that they want so much to share and to give, but they have kind of a, a sense that they're not valuable enough to receive back, or that somehow people will figure out they don't know everything that they think they should know, and therefore they're not worthy. I was even talking with a friend this morning, and she was saying, like, I realize I have a business. I've been treating it like a hobby because when I do work for other people, it's like a real thing. But when I do it for myself, I know I don't take it as seriously as I could and as I would for somebody else. So I think that's like a really profound insight um, and really significant. So if that's true, I'm just going to move here. Um, if that is true, then what are, we, what are we missing out on sharing with the world? If we are seeing our value only in the eyes of others, or like when I was talking with Michelle, we were talking about like the audience and how weird it is to perform when you feel like it's just going out without that energy and that exchange. Well, this is the time to challenge that. And this is the time to build those relationships, to double down on the people who create meaning or who you felt a spark with who might be a partner in the future. And you don't know what that, that means. And it's not about getting something. This is about just reconnecting, let, letting people know why, you, why you're reaching out, that you're thinking about them, and that there's something of value that you see in them. So that's your challenge. Five people you haven't talked to, ideally six, six months to a year, this could be um, a teacher, a mentor. This could be somebody who you used to hang out with, with in college that you've kind of grown apart. This could be a family member who you don't see that often. Um, I know I don't, I don't see my parents very often at all, maybe three times a year, but through this whole experience, we're now having like a virtual dinner every week with, with my parents and my, my sister and we're all in three states. So that's kind of a neat thing. This can be an incredible opportunity to network through generosity and to rework those connections, to make us all stronger together and help us remember that we really are in this together. So I do wanna do a little bit of an experiment. And that is, I wanna lead a little brief visualization. A lot of us here um, are, are trying out new things. And also there is still a level of anxiety. We hear that we're going to be inside for 30 days, if not more, and we're giving up something of our personal, um, comfort in doing our normal lives. We are in life interrupted right now, <laughs> but we're doing that for the sake of other people. So we're already getting the generosity thing going. If we are staying at home, it's been great to see everybody kind of, um, share their stories about how they're, how they're handling that. Some even as an artistic challenge, uh, doing a 5K at six, six feet between people or, or whatever the, the examples are that I've heard. So let's do a brief visualization. I want you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. Hold it. And I want you to exhale anything that is on your mind that is challenging, that is fearful, that is tense, that is anxious. Okay, take another deep breath in. Hold. And as you exhale, exhale another layer of stress and anxiety and anything else that is on your mind. This is an incredible time to be and to experiment with new ways of being, not just new ways of doing. Okay, so third deep breath in. Hold and exhale. Now, I want you to think about a time 
take this opportunity to close your eyes, go to that quiet place, and reconnect with a memory where everything was all right. And just take a minute and reimagine that time, visualize it in your mind, and really allow yourself to go back to that moment in time. And as you breathe on your own, I want you to notice what is happening with you. I want you to even like tune in to your heart. Just go in there. Maybe there's a little door you can open. Just like find your way inside. I want you to go inside and notice the expansiveness of what is there. We think about our heart as a very small thing, but a loving act, a loving memory is really all you need to reconnect with a sense of something bigger. So as you're there, I want you to notice how it feels, notice what you see, awaken your senses, and imagine that there's a light shining in the center of your heart. You can go toward that light and notice how it's like this beautiful pinkish light that is touching all the parts of you that you hadn't noticed a minute ago. Maybe you're feeling it on the tip of your nose. Maybe you feel it in the back of your neck. Maybe you feel it in your feet and under your seat where you're touching your chair, touching the floor. Just notice this light touching every part of you, surrounding you and filling you up with this beautiful, calm, blissful feeling of love. Now, as you're basking in this warm glow of pink, I want to encourage you to see if there's a question you want to ask. Oftentimes we get obsessed with our brains and what makes sense when actually our hearts have wisdom that we can access anytime when we get quiet and start to feel into a happy moment. So use this as a jumping off point to see if you have anything you'd like to ask your heart. And just wait for the response. Just feel that sense of calm, of fullness, of love. Maybe even there's a little bit of freedom, a sense of relief. And wait for the answer. This answer is just for you. It belongs to you. You don't have to share it with anybody. You don't have to tell anybody about it. This is just intelligence for you from your heart. You are full, you are loved, you're generous, you are your best when you are fully in your heart. You can access to higher things, to other things. So slowly I want you to come back Start to move your, your fingers, your toes. Maybe you come out of your heart and close the door. And just sit there with your eyes closed for another minute. And notice what it felt like to go inside. What it felt like to deeply feel that love. And that love is accessible to you, that feeling through any memory you choose that is happy and that is loving anytime. This is available to you anytime, including when you don't know what to do. Often you can ask your heart something, but you need to give yourself some space and some time to actually go inside and gather that wisdom. So as you open your eyes and take a big, big breath, I want you to just reflect on the information that you got 
in that transmission. This is a tool you can use anytime. This is a tool you can do, use every day. Again, as we're here in the middle of this whole time where we are being disrupted, this is an opportunity and a tool for you to keep experimenting with heart-centeredness, with generosity, with your own creativity. This is also a really good tool if you're feeling stuck. It's a new way of being perhaps for some of us, but it's a really fantastic thing to practice. And I guarantee if you do this every day, just self-guided breathing and, and feeling in, gathering information <laughs> from the resources you already have at your disposal, you're gonna start showing up differently in your life. You're going to start showing up differently in your um, in your work and in all the places that you go. So with that, I'm going to ask if anyone on Facebook or, or Instagram has any questions. I think we might have somebody who is trying to come in. No, nobody's trying to come in. Okay, forget that. So what did this mean for you? What was it like to go inside? Also, think about your five people that you're going to reach out to. What will that be like for you? And maybe challenge yourself a little bit. Okay, in the couple of minutes that we have left, I want to share another tool that I've created. So this again requires my favorite blank sheet of paper. And in this one, I folded it in thirds. Folded in thirds and then in half. So you have a paper that is folded into six separate segments. This is a tool that you can also use to manage fear. I will post this on the Facebook page so you can, you can look at it and um, print it or create your own. But this asks you, what are you afraid of? In the next column, it says, why? Let's see down below. So, so far, what are you afraid of and why? Third, what would happen if that came true? This is something that you're going to need to see and probably go through on your own. And then what would that mean? What would happen if that were true? And then what would that mean, that coming trueness? Then you're going to go into what would happen if the opposite came true. So this is asking you to go into the unknown positive. And then what would that mean? What are you afraid of and why? What would happen if that came true? And what would that coming true mean? And then now, what if the opposite came true? And what would that mean? I'll post it, here's what it looks like. I will post it on the Facebook page. I'll post it on my website. If anyone has questions or going through a, a tough time, reach out to me. I'm here to help. You can set up a time on my calendar. Uh, there's a link in my bio on Instagram. I think that's integrated with Facebook, but I'll double check. If not, I'll post the link. And just know that we're all in this together. We're all in the same boat. I'm here to help. And I'm here to celebrate your creativity and to foster generosity and connectedness any way that I can. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow.